Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I have shared before that typically when I look at the lectionary readings, I try and find a common thread between all three. This week was particularly challenging. For those of you joining online, uh, I would encourage you, there is the link to our, uh, our bulletin, so be sure to check out those scripture readings. I'm going to be referencing all three, but welcome to you online. As I looked at these three readings, it felt kind of like if you were at a, a noisy, crowded bar, and you're talking to three friends, and they're all talking to you at once, and you're trying to listen to all three, and you have like, like one of them who's just really angry about a co-worker, and they're just ranting on and on about it. That's the Old Testament reading. And the person ranting is God, and the co-worker is Israel. Like that's, that's kind of the Old Testament reading. Then the epistle reading is somebody who's just like constant stream of consciousness just talking. You're like, what are you even saying, man? Because if you look at our epistle reading, verses 7 through 10 are all one sentence. It just kind of goes on and on, as our reader could tell you. It was a, an interest. And then the gospel reading, that's the one that you're like, no, no, you guys be quiet. What are you saying? What on a platter? Like... The whole thing, the readings today are just crazy. And so I was looking at them, and by the way, pray for me, because we have a children's message in the next service. How do you do a children's message on that gospel reading, the beheading of John? (laughs) Um, But I did find a common thread. I found something that I think all three of them speak to in a very real, very visceral way. But before I go into that, if you could join me in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today and we thank you for the chance to come together and worship you, whether here in person or online. Uh, Lord, we pray that you will bless this time. Lord, I thank you for the chance to share your message. And I pray that it is your message. Lord, speak in this place. Speak even in spite of me in spite of who I am, in spite uh, of my own personality. Speak, Lord, in your most powerful way. Let your Holy Spirit be active in each and every one of us. We pray all these things through your Son, Jesus, in his name. Amen. As I look at those three readings, there's something that kind of comes out to me. And that is the idea, the question of, what does it look like to be a child of God? What does it look like to be, well, in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel, which were really kind of the children of God in the time, right? These are the people who followed God. There were all these other nations around, but Israel kind of served as God's people, right? And then as we move into the New Testament, that kind of all gets flipped on its head. Jesus really kind of changed that whole idea that Israel was the chosen people. There was still that tension But Jesus talked about Jew and Gentile, all are the same in the eyes of God, right? And so I guess you could say, really, what does it mean to be the church? And I say church with a capital C. There's a difference, because capital C church is is all churches, that fellowship of all believers. The small C church would be, you know, Christ Memorial or, or the Lutheran church or what have you. What does it mean to be the church, and I see that thread because, because the Old Testament talks about uh, an Israel that essentially has fallen away from what God desired. I've talked about it a lot, how Israel kept asking for kings, for political rulers, right? And God was like, nah, I'm not sure you really want that. And they just kept going. And so we see them in the midst of having one of these kings, and a prophet is actually speaking out against this king, against this nation, And so you see kind of an Israel that's almost lost its way. And then the epistle reading is, uh, again, with all those run-on sentences, talking about what it means to be predestined, what it means to be God's chosen people. And now as Lutherans, uh, we believe in what's called single predestination, that all people who walk on this earth, who have a heartbeat, are predestined for heaven. But as I talked about last week, we have free will to reject that. To say no. And so while we are predestined for paradise, predestined for salvation, we have the opportunity to say, yeah, no thanks. I'm not sure that I want eternal paradise. And then the gospel reading talks about the alternative. 
what the world looks like without God, what the world would look like without that, that moral compass that we have through the law of God, through Scripture. We see how the world operates in brutal fashion. So, what does it mean to be part of the church? Well, I think in order to kind of establish that, I want to first establish what the church isn't. What the church, as we know it, is not. The first thing, the church, and I've talked about this before, but it's always good to have a reminder, the church is not a club. The church isn't uh, the Freemasons or the Rotary Club or the Water Buffalo or whatever it is, right? The church is not just a club. We're not, we don't exist to bring in new members. That's not why we're here. We don't exist as a community organization that that throws events and, and tries to have the best party. The church isn't a club. The church is also not a concert or a theater play. Uh, Because when you go to a concert, you can kind of get a little agitated that not the right song was played or they played that one a little different, right? You feel like you have that right, but that's not what this is. When you go to, to a play, you're saying, well, hell, they changed the lines. That's not right. That's not what they're supposed to say. But this is not a concert, nor is it a play, nor is it theater. The church is also not a caucus. I had to come up with another C word there. Um, Caucus. It's not a political organization, right? But that didn't fit with my my Cs. I have four of them. They all start with C. Uh, But the church is not a political organization. Uh, As you see in that Old Testament reading, when the church gets so heavily involved in politics, bad things happen, right? We're not a political organization. You won't hear from this pulpit who to vote for. This pulpit is not red or blue. Well, right now it's green, right? We're not a political organization. And then lastly, we're not a competition. And that one's key when it comes to the church, capital C, this family of believers. Because you look again at that Old Testament reading and you see the king of Israel say, yeah, yeah, okay, I see that you're a prophet of God. I don't like what you're saying, though, so go to Judah. Judah was the schism, was the split off, was the competition. That was the nation of Israel had already split and created them, the other tribe. And Judah was this rival kingdom that existed and they were against each other. And and it's nothing, we haven't changed really, right? Right? Instead of Israel and Judah, now it's Catholics and Protestants. Now it's, it's Lutherans and Episcopalians and Baptists and Methodists. Now it's ELCA and ALC and LCMS. Now, now it's Epiphany and St. Mark and Christ Memorial. Now it's traditional and contemporary. We have all these divisions. But we aren't about competition. We rejoice when another church is doing well because that means the kingdom of God is growing, right? We're not a competition. Now, looking back at all those things, it's interesting because the church truly does all those things properly, right? If you look at the various things that I just said the church isn't, a church is not a club. Yes, but we do have community events. We do seek to be part of the community. We do seek to have, to have membership, to be a place where people feel welcome coming in, right? And part of that is having those events, having those things that we do that will draw people in. The church also, in some sense, has concerts. We seek every Sunday morning, every time we have Lenten worship, Advent worship, we seek to provide excellence and pleasing God and praising God. The church, in some sense, yes, is part of politics because the Christian should be part of the political leadership in this community, in this country, in whatever body you're looking at. We should be able to have a say and say this is what God is pointing towards. We still look at the God's law and scripture and and proclaim that. We should still be part of that conversation. And then lastly, competition. Well, that breeds excellence, right? When we're in competition, we say, oh, you're doing this and we're doing that and let's try and do it the best we can. That's not necessarily a bad thing. So the church does all those things, but the church is not about those things. And when we start to focus on being about those things, we've lost our way. Because if you look at what Scripture says, two of the most famous Bible verses of all time, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, right? What is the purpose that he gave his son? Because he loves the world. 
And then from the mouth of Jesus himself, go therefore and make disciples of who? All nations. That's our mission. That is the purpose that we gather together as the church, capital C and lowercase c. We are a faith-based organization. We're all about faith, genuine, true faith. Because if you look at the world, there are instances of what they would call faith, right? A scientist has to have faith in their hypothesis. It takes faith to do some of the crazy things we do in this world. I mean, even just driving down a two-lane road, you're having faith that the oncoming traffic won't go across that magical yellow line, right? Faith is there, but genuine faith is different. Faith in God and how we live our lives is different. See, genuine faith, it's not inherited. It's not something that you say like, oh, oh, my parents always went to church, so I go to church. No, confirmation is about taking that faith, that inherited faith, and making it our own. Saying, I believe in this. I trust in this. This is part of who I am. I am part of the church. Genuine faith isn't shallow. You think of a tree with shallow roots, the first wind is going to come knock it over, right? The first trial, the first difficult thing that we go through is going to cause those questions, those doubts that shake us to our very core. Genuine faith is not shallow, and genuine faith, my friends, is not conditional. I've talked to too many people who say, well, I've had all these bad things happen in my life. How can I trust God? (laughs) Because God has seen you through it. Because God is with you, because your faith in God is not conditional upon whether this life is free of trials. No, in fact, in this world, you will have trouble. But have faith, because Jesus has overcome this world. See, we, as an organization, are about faith. About furthering our own faith, strengthening that own faith, strengthening that relationship that we have with God. But then even more than that, possibly even more importantly than that, is guiding others to faith. Every single thing that we do as Christ Memorial should be about faith, about growing our own faith and helping others to come to faith. Every event that we have, every meeting that we have, every time the youth group gets together, every time leadership gets together, we should be thinking about what is this doing to help people to understand and to know God more? It, we can have community events, we can have picnics, those are all well and good, but it should always be about bringing people into a relationship with God, because that's what sets us apart. That's what makes us different than the world, different than the world that we see in our gospel reading with its brutality and its violence, with with being stuck to oaths, different than than that story of Israel that's saying, I don't like what you're saying, I'm going to back away from that. No, we're different than this world. We can't out-concert the world. We're not going to have as good of a club as the world. We're, we're, if we start getting involved in politics and all that, when you throw mud with a pig, you're going to get dirty and the pig's going to like it, right? So we have a challenge as Christians, as followers of God, to be different, to pursue godly things, to pursue faith to live it out in our lives so that people will look at us and say, what is the reason for the hope that you have? And we can smile and say, because I have a God who is by my side through all things. My friends, sitting here today, we as the church have the opportunity to proclaim hope in a hopeless world, to be light in the midst of the darkness. There is so much hurting and pain in this world right now. We have a chance to be different. And yes, we do all those things. We have all sorts of different methods of doing it. But at the end of the day, we always have to remember the reason that we do everything as the church is about faith. And our God will never turn his back on you, who will guide you through this world. And who at the end of the day, maybe you still have to go through those trials. You still have to go through those difficult things because John the Baptist still, uh, well, the gospel reading happened, didn't it? (laughs) But we know that God may not save us from the trials of this world, but he saves us from our sin. He saves us from the damnation that we have earned ourselves. He saves us from our own punishment. And that's what we have faith in. 
We have faith in a God who loves us unconditionally, not shallow, uh, not he looks at us and he sees his beloved children. And he wants us to let others know that too. So the challenge that we have is to be different. To view how this world treats people and treat them differently. To share hope, to share what Jesus shared, to share faith, hope, and love. The very same faith inspired in us by the Holy Spirit. The very same hope that we have through God and the very same love that Jesus showed to the people as he walked in this ministry. But ultimately, the love that he shows to you. That's our challenge. It isn't going to be easy. But God is with us. And we have faith. Amen? Amen.